uh, want to thank you for coming to our Good Friday service. Um, we normally have a, a packed sanctuary on this day, um, the day we remember the crucifixion of Jesus. Uh, normally on this day, uh, we change the pyramids to black, and, um, and we don't have them change the, to black. I asked Dawn, our, our altar guild uh, uh, leader, if she would just leave them bare. What we normally do during the service is we have them, uh, the, all the, the, the pyramids are black, and then at a certain point in the service, toward the very end, those pyramids are stripped away, bare, leaving the altar and everything bare, uh, representing Christ's final death on the cross. I was thinking about this week and how, and this month, and how uh, the coronavirus crisis has, has just sort of stripped normal life away from so many of us. Sometimes I think, what a tragedy that we can't be in church and, and experience Holy Week. But then as I was thinking this week about it, in some ways uh, we're experiencing the way of the cross. How, how Jesus, little by little, through that two days of passion, uh, was stripped away his freedom and, uh, and everything that was his until his very life was given for us. So on this day, we uh, are going to celebrate, remember rather, that time of Jesus' ultimate sacrifice, the Son of God's ultimate sacrifice for our sins on the cross. of unleavened bread when it was customary to sacrifice the passover lamb jesus disciples asked him where do you want us to go and make preparations for you to eat the passover 
So he sent two of his disciples into the city with detailed instructions. And they found things just as Jesus had told them. So they prepared the Passover. When evening came, Jesus arrived with the twelve. While they were reclining at the table eating, he said, I tell you the truth, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They were saddened, and one by one they said to him, Surely not I. Surely not I. Surely not I. It is one of the twelve, he replied. The Son of Man will go just as it is written about him. But woe to that man who betrays the Son of Man. It would be better for him if he had not been born. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take it. This is my body. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and offered it to them, and they all drank from it. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. He said to them, I tell you the truth, I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it anew in the kingdom of God. When they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus told them, You will all fall away, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. But after I have risen, I will go ahead of you into Galilee. Even if all fall away, I will not. Peter declared. Jesus answered, I tell you the truth today. Yes, even tonight, before the rooster crows twice, you yourself will disown me three times. But Peter declared emphatically, Even if I have to die with you, I will never disown you. And all the others said the same. They went to a place called Gethsemane, and Jesus said, Sit here while I pray. He took Peter, James, and John with him. Deeply distressed and troubled, he said to them, My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch. Going a little further, he fell to the ground and prayed that, if possible, the hour might pass from him. Abba, Father, he prayed, everything is possible for you. Take this cup from me, yet not what I will, but what you will. Then he returned to the disciples and found them sleeping. Simon, he said to Peter, are you asleep? Could you not watch for one hour? Watch and pray so you will not fall into temptation. Once more he went away and prayed the same thing. When he came back again, he found them sleeping because their eyelids were heavy. And they didn't know what to say to him. Returning the third time, he said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Enough! The hour has come. Look, the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us go. Here comes my betrayer. Just as he was speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, appeared. With him was a crowd armed with swords and clubs, sent from the chief priests, the teachers of the law, and the elders. Now the betrayer had arranged a signal with them. The one I kiss is the man. Arrest him and lead him away under guard. Going at once to Jesus, Judas said, Rabbi, and kissed him. The men seized Jesus and arrested him. Then one of those standing near drew his sword and struck the servant of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Am I leading a rebellion? said Jesus that you come after me with swords and clubs. Every day I was with you, teaching in the temple courts, and you did not arrest me. But scripture must be fulfilled. 
Then everyone deserted him and fled. They took Jesus to the high priest, and all the chief priests, elders, and teachers of the law came together. Peter followed him at a distance, right into the courtyard of the high priest. There he sat with the guards and warmed himself at the fire. The chief priests and the whole Sanhedrin were looking for evidence against Jesus so they could put him to death. But they didn't find any. Many testified falsely against him. But their statements did not agree. Then some stood up and gave this false testimony against him. We heard him say, I will destroy this man-made temple and in three days we'll build another, not made by man. Yet even then, their testimony did not agree. Then the high priest stood up before them and asked Jesus, Are you not going to answer? What is this testimony that these men are bringing against you? Again, the high priest asked him, Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed One? I am said Jesus. And you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the Mighty One and coming on clouds of heaven. The high priest tore his clothes and asked, Why do we need any more witnesses? You have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? They all condemned him as worthy of death. Then some began to spit at him. They blindfolded him. Struck him with their fists and said, Prophesy. And the guards took him and beat him. servant girls of the high priest came by. When she saw Peter warming himself, she looked closely at him and said, You were also with that Nazarene Jesus. But he denied it. I don't know or understand what you're talking about. He said, and went out into the entryway. When the servant girl saw him there, she said again to those standing around, This fellow is one of them. Again, he denied it. After a little while, those standing near said to Peter, Surely you are one of them, for you are a Galilean. He began to call down curses on himself and swore to them, I don't know this man you're talking about. Immediately, the rooster crowed the second time. 
Then Peter remembered the words Jesus had spoken to him. Before the rooster crows twice, you will disown me three times. And he broke down and wept. Very early in the morning, the chief priests, with the elders, the teachers of the law, and the whole Sanhedrin reached a decision. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Are you the king of the Jews? asked Pilate. Yes, it is as you say, Jesus replied. The chief priests accused him of many things, so again Pilate asked him, Aren't you going to answer? See how many things they are accusing you of. But Jesus made no reply, and Pilate was amazed. Now it was the custom at the feast to release a prisoner whom the people requested. A man called Barabbas was in prison with the insurrectionists who had committed a murder in an uprising. The crowd came up and asked Pilate to do for them what he usually did. Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? Asked Pilate, knowing it was out of envy that the chief priests had handed Jesus over to him. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have Pilate release Barabbas instead. What shall I do then with the one you call the king of Jews? Pilate asked them. Crucify him, they shouted. Why? What crime has he committed? Asked Pilate, but they shouted all the louder. Crucify him! Crucify him! Crucify him! Crucify him! led Jesus away into the palace and called together the whole the whole company of soldiers they put a purple robe on him then wove a crown of thorns and set it on him and then they began to call out hail, hail king, king of, of the, the Jews. Jews again and again they struck him on the head with the staff and spit on him falling on their knees they worshiped him and after they had mocked him they took off the purple robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. A certain man from Cyrene, Simon, the father of Alexander and Rufus, 
was passing by on his way from the country, and they forced him to carry the cross. They brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he wouldn't take it. Then they crucified him. Dividing up his clothes, they cast lots to see what each would get. The written notice of the charge against him read, King of the Jews. Two robbers were also crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. And those who passed by hurled insults at him, shaking their heads and saying, So you who are going to destroy the temple and build it in three days, come down from the cross and save yourself. In the same way, the chief priest and the teachers of the laws mocked him among themselves. He saved others, they said, but he can't save himself. Let this Christ, the King of Israel, come down from the cross that we may see and believe. And even those crucified with him heaped insults on him. At the sixth hour, darkness came over the whole land until the ninth hour. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of those standing near heard this, they said, Listen, he's calling Elijah. One man ran, filled a sponge with wine vinegar, put it on a stick, and offered it to Jesus to drink, saying, Leave him alone now. Let's see if Elijah comes to take him down. With a loud cry, Jesus breathed his last. The curtain of the temple was torn into two from top to bottom. And when the centurion who stood there in front of Jesus heard his cry and saw how he died, he said, Surely this man was the Son of God. <laughs> Crucified my Lord Were you there when they crucified my Lord Oh, 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 oh. sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble Oh, 
sometimes it causes me to tremble, 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 tremble. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Would you join me in, in prayer? Lord, we thank you that on this day uh, we celebrate, we remember your death on the cross for our sins. Help us to always remember that it is not we who do anything to save ourselves, but it is you alone, your sacrifice alone, that saved us and gave us your righteousness. Lord, for all of us who are, because of the crisis and the time we live in, are facing loss of one kind or another, uh, like the altar that, that stripped bare, we at times are feeling that way. I pray that this would be a reminder of what you went through, and a reminder that, that the one who gave all, the one who, who was stripped of everything, was also raised from the dead on the third day. Help us to remember these things this week. In Jesus' name we, we pray. Would you join us here and at home, uh, going through and praying the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.